Hey guys, and welcome to Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Today I'm coming at you with part two of my Asian American author recommendations. Now my first one of these videos I did actually about two years ago, so it has definitely been a while, but I finally feel like I have a good enough stack of books and authors here to talk about, so let's go ahead and get into it. Actually, before I get started, I do want to mention that I will just kind of briefly be introducing each book and each author, uh, so definitely check the description box and the cards because anytime I have a relevant uh, review video or wrap-up video, I will be um, including that down in the description for you guys to check out if you want more um, complete and uh, long-winded thoughts. I want to start off with the one author who I don't have any physical book of here to share with you guys, and that is Adrian Tomine. Now, Tomine is a fourth-generation Japanese-American, and he is a pretty prolific graphic novelist. If you like really clean, um, simple art, I think you'll really like Tomine's style. He does a lot of really crisp line, a lot of just really simple, kind of minimalistic art, and he does really great things with color. For example, if you like more muted or pastel colors, I think you'll really like his artwork. He also does a really great job of using kind of monochromatic washes to really uh, set the atmosphere or tone of each piece. Tomine has several graphic novels out, I believe 10 or 12 at this point, but I've only actually read two, and the one I would really recommend you guys to check out is Shortcomings. Shortcomings follows a man named Ben Tanaka who is Japanese American and is also very uncomfortable with being Japanese American. Basically, Shortcomings follows Ben's um, kind of identity struggles, and I think if you're interested in identity politics, if you're interested in what it is like being a multicultural person in um, modern society, I think you will really enjoy this one, and I know I really did. The only other Tomine work I have read so far is uh, his most recent graphic novel, Killing and Dying, and I think you can mo more accurately call this one a graphic short story collection because it is literally a bunch of small short stories stories, um, all included in one graphic novel compilation thing. There were a few stories in this collection that I really enjoyed, and again, I loved his use of color and line, but as a whole, the collection just didn't really do it for me, so I would definitely say check it out and form your own opinion, but um, if you want my honest you know, really strong recommendation, start off with shortcomings. And as long as we're talking about short story collections, I would highly suggest you check out the work of Sequoia Nagamatsu, who is Asian American of Japanese and Portuguese heritage. Nagamatsu's stories have been pretty widely published, so definitely check the description box for his Goodreads author page where you can get, you know, a full breakdown of all of his publications, but I would personally really recommend that you check out this, which is his short story collection, Where We Go When All We Were Is Gone, which was published in 2016 by Black Lawrence Press. If you're interested in reading some really interesting, really quirky interpretations of Japanese pop culture and myth, I would highly recommend this, and if you're into um, kind of what Mercedes would dub fabulous fiction, I think you will really enjoy the short story collection. And there honestly wasn't any short story in here that I didn't enjoy. So hopefully that will encourage some of you guys to pick him up because I honestly don't know um, that he's very widely read. I hope more people discover him. I haven't managed to read any Amy Tan since my last recommendations video, but I have read some Maxine Hong Kingston, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys check out The Woman Warrior. Now, I feel like when you think of Asian American lit and when you specifically think of Chinese American lit, Maxine Hong Kingston and Amy Tan are the two big names that come to mind, and I think that is for good reason. This is an absolutely stunning work of art. At the most basic level, The Woman Warrior is an autobiography, but it is so much more than that. It is uh, personal history mixed with myth, mixed with dream, mixed with poetry, and it is one of the more beautiful memoirs I think I have ever read and probably will ever read. If you like kind of the more surreal, dreamlike qualities of Haruki Murakami, or you like um, David Mitchell when things kind of go a little weird in Number 9 Dream, I would definitely, definitely recommend this to you guys. And again, if you're interested in Asian American lit, I feel like you kind of have to get to Maxine Hong Kingston at some point. For another memoir, I would definitely recommend you guys check out uh, Farewell to Manzanar, which is written by Jean Wakatsuki Houston and James D. Houston. And Jean uh, Wakatsuki is obviously her maiden name. She is a Japanese-American woman and she 
was a child when her family was sent off to the Japanese internment camp um, in Manzanar, California. This is another book that I really, really want more people to read because I feel like this is an aspect of American history, specifically American World War II history, that we don't really like talking about, of course, uh, the internment of Japanese Americans. So maybe if you're a little fuzzy on America's history with um, dealing with specific racial or ethnic or minority groups, read this. If you're interested in what it was like in these internment camps, read this. If you want to understand the lasting effects of systemic um, discrimination, read this. And I mean, I know I'm making it sound very serious, but it's just honestly a really interesting look at Japanese internment because she was a child, so you get a really interesting perspective. Kind of along those same lines, I would really recommend that you guys check out The Buddha and the Attic by Julie Otsuka. Again, Otsuka is Japanese American, and I know that her first um, novel also dealt with um, the internment of Japanese Americans and I believe that was based on her own family's experiences so I haven't read that one personally myself but I'm very eager to check it out. The Buddha in the Attic is kind of a more comprehensive look at what it was like to be a Japanese immigrant in 20th century America and it follows a group of Japanese women who have just left Japan and are on the ship over to America and it starts there and I think it's again, a really important book to read in today's political climate. Also, if you're interested in um, non-traditional narratives, I think this is a really great book to check out because, like I said, this follows a crowd of women or a, a group of women and they don't, it, it's not like a, a traditional third person narrative. They speak as a chorus, kind of like you would see in a Greek uh, play, you know, where the chorus kind of comes in and provides narration or provides context. And I just, I thought this was a really, really interesting and again, really powerful read. And then these next two recommendations are kind of cheating, but I'm going to go ahead and mention them anyways. Uh, this first book here is, of course, Madeline Tian's Do Not Say We Have Nothing, which I believe is on the shortlist for the Bailey's Prize um, right now and of course was long listed for the 2016 Man Booker Prize. Madeline Chen is of Chinese Malaysian descent and she was actually born and raised in Canada but I figure you know Canada's in North America so that counts right? Do Not Say We Have Nothing is an epic family saga um, that spans um, cultural revolution in China to more modern day um, Canada and it's just a really beautiful look at what it means to be family, what it means to be friendship, what it means to be a music lover and a lover of stories, and um, honestly, it's a chunker, I know, uh, but it is so emotionally engaging. I was not expecting that to be just so... Yeah, gets you right here. Madeline Tian also has um, quite a few other books that I, again, I have not gotten to check out so far, but I would really at least recommend that you guys read Do Not Say We Have Nothing, and then I will, will report back to you guys once I have gotten to more of her fiction. And then again, I feel like this last one is a bit of a cheat, uh, because this is Sarong Party Girls by Cheryl Lulian Tan, who is actually a Singaporean author, but she's currently based in the United States, so... I don't know. I mean, like, she wrote this in English, she lives here in the United States now, and I feel like this is okay to include in this video. Sarong Party of Girls was one of the last books that I read in 2016, and it just kind of snuck onto my top five books of the year, and honestly, I cannot recommend this to you guys highly enough. This follows a woman named Jazzy who is in her mid-twenties and who is starting to freak out about the fact that she is not yet married. She also doesn't really have a, a super distinct plan for the rest of her life, and she's kind of questioning everything she ever thought she wanted. So yeah, it's kind of the story of a quarter life crisis, I guess you could say. Jazzy is such a compelling narrator that you just can't help but feeling empathy for everything she's going through. I also think I read this at the right time because I am now in my mid-twenties and I totally get her feelings of the future, what plans, what am I supposed to be doing with my life, and yeah, I think if you are especially a woman in your mid-twenties, you might really find that this is kind of the perfect book for you. So those were some Asian American book and author recommendations for you guys, and I really hope that you find something here that you like. Again, most of these have their own individual review videos, so 
please check the description for more in-depth thoughts, though I'm pretty sure this is actually going to end up being quite a long video. And of course, if you guys have any authors you think I would like to check out based on what I have shared with you here and in my last video, I'm always up for hearing those, so please leave them down below. But otherwise, that is all I have for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye!